All right, this was sent into the channel for review, a YSOLX car inverter. It's one of those uh, uh, 12 volts in or 13.8 volts in, and uh, it has an inverter in it, so it gives you some AC. It also has some uh, USB A's and a USB C on the side for charging too. So it's a nice little unit. Uh, this is the, uh, the model number MT-PC200. That probably goes with the 200 watts. So I don't know if they have other models or not. This is the one they sent me, um, power inverter. So yeah, I think uh, let's uh, make some measurements and see if it uh, does what it says it's supposed to do. All right, let's do some measurements on this thing. That's what this channel's all about. Uh, so we're gonna be testing the AC output here. And uh, first of all, we're going to be using a uh, a 3 amp 13.8 volt uh, DC uh, power supply uh, and that should that should handle what we're doing just fine okay so we can we can turn this on now we're supplying DC to the box and the AC uh, outlets are switched so you have to turn the uh, turn the button on here to switch the AC so that's nice all right so I have um, a uh, a load first of all let me show you the uh, the load here. Uh, so I have a 17, 7.5. I have 7.5 K resistor. So seven, 7,500 ohms. Uh, that should give us a good load. So I have that on this here. I have voltmeters across it and I have a, a uh, we'll be looking at it with an oscilloscope. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is turn it on and measure the AC voltage. All right. So we're getting about 116 volts. AC out of it, so that sounds that sounds okay. All right, uh, we're going to be using a battery-powered oscilloscope, which is a, a really nice use case for these things. So you don't have to worry about grounding or anything. Now, um, before we get to this, I do want to mention grounding. Okay, so let's turn this off. We'll unplug this. Okay, and let me just gotta put it here for safe keep, safekeeping. Okay. Um, so in a house, you use a test or something like this to see if you have the hot and neutrals and other things flipped around. I use these all the time, make sure my wiring's correct. Okay. So we're going to, we're going to put that thing in here. Okay. We're going to turn it, turn it on. All right. And we get, uh, we get one light. Okay. We get the middle light. Okay. And so what does the middle light mean? All right. So the middle light means that we have uh, an open ground, okay? And that's true for this thing. If you measure the voltage between ground and one of these pins, or ground and the other pin, you get no voltage. So this is a completely floating ground. And I guess that's apparent because it's, a, it's only two wires here going in and it's DC. So there's no ground reference. So don't expect to have any safety for grounding. Just because it has a ground, a ground plug on it, it's just, it's just there to allow you to plug things in, but it doesn't, doesn't help you out uh, safety wise. Okay. So be aware of that. Now the thing is DC isolated. So it's a little safer than normal, but still be aware that that's not really, that's not really doing anything for you. All right. Let's go ahead and plug the, uh, plug the test, test cable back in. Now we're going to be looking at the, uh, oscilloscope and it's nice because it's completely isolated for, from everything. Okay. We can turn this on, uh, turn it on way down here. Okay. I did a review on this. If you're curious about it. Okay. So let's turn it on and there we go. Uh, that is the waveform output. Now, uh, it is not a sine wave. All right. It has a dead period and then it goes high and then a dead period and then it goes low. So it's like ones and zeros in, in AC voltage land, right? Ones and then zeros and ones and zeros up and down, up and down, plus one, then minus one, then plus one and minus one with some, some stalling in the middle. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so that's not great. Um, now the book says, uh, that it is a modified sine wave. Okay. So this is what they call a modified sine wave. Yeah, it's been heavily modified. Okay. Now the other thing that they claim is, 
uh, distortion rate. And I'm not quite sure what they mean about that, but if I were reading this, I would say, okay, modified sine rate, it's within 3% of distorting of a real sine wave. That's the way I read this number, distortion rate. Okay, so less than 3%, so we can test that. All right, and so I have this meter hooked up. All right, and uh, we can connect it up to our signal and measure our distortion. So we're measuring distortion at about 27%, okay? That sounds about right, 27%. So nowhere near 3%. So that's a big fail on the, uh, on the card here. So we have 20%, 27% distortion. And I think anybody looking at this, uh, at, at this waveform will say, yep, 27% distortion, sure enough. <laughs> okay, um, so can this damage things? Yes, it can. Um, if you have like a wall wart for like an iPhone or, you know, or a laptop power supply and stuff, a lot of times these signals are fine, but there are other equipment that don't like these signals. So you, you, you better know ahead of time whether this is a safe signal for your appliance or not, or whatever you're gonna plug into this thing, whether it's safe enough or not for you. Um, how do you find that out? I don't know. That's a really difficult thing to find out, uh, other than the hard way that it just doesn't work or that it destroys it uh, for some reason. Um, but be aware that not everything likes this type of what likes this type of waveform. Okay. Okay. Another uh, thing on the um, on the data sheet here is uh, the wattage. Now they give four different models, 100 watt, 150, 200, and 300. I don't know if they sell all of those. This particular unit is marked as 200 watts on the back, okay? I'm not gonna test that here today, but um, it does say that it will, it will output 110 volts plus or minus 10%. Uh, and that's what we've measured, 200 watts maximum. So, so you need to do the calculation. If you have 120 volts and you have 20, um, uh, 200 watts, you know, you're looking at about an amp and a half or something, one point, uh, my brain doesn't work anymore. Now that they invented calculators, I, my brain doesn't do anything. <laughs> so 200 and 120 is 1.6, yeah, 1.6 uh, amps. So make sure that you don't plug anything bigger than that into here. Um, or this thing will melt down on you. Uh, so I think the next thing we're going to do, um, I'm not going to test the DC ports. Those are probably just regular old DC ports. Uh, they have one that's marked a high current one. Uh, the orange one here is uh, 18... Uh, yeah, they have it marked 18 watts. They have this one marked at 20 watts. And then they have the other two marked at 2.4 amps. All right, so uh, yeah, let's open it up and see how this thing's constructed. All right, there's four screws and then you use a spudger to open the case. And uh, yeah, here we go. Uh, looks pretty nice inside actually, uh, better than anticipated. So here are the four FETs that, that do the uh, plus and minus business. You know, one for the plus, one for the minus, one for the hold. Uh, that's here. Um, they might be they might be par paralleled up. It might be that two go down and two go up, um, something like that. Um, so the input comes into a, a uh, DC to DC converter. There's a two five amp fuse there. I, I don't. That's two point five amps or something like that. Anyway, there's a fuse. Um, here's the uh, switchers for the. Uh, DC to DC converter. There's a second little bridge rectifier over here that gives you some things here for the uh, for the others. So there there are some DC to DC converters. There's a chip there and a chip there that handle the uh, handle the uh, USB things. So that's kind of separate, done separately. And then the AC is is over here. Um, so we have high voltage caps. Uh, the uh, connectors for the uh, uh, outlet are just single-sided. So when they come in, they only wipe one side. They don't. They don't wipe both sides of the of the connector. 
Uh, they only wipe one side. Um, so let's see what else is there to say. Uh, not really well, the. Uh, uh, I didn't anticipate a fan, so there's a, there's a fan in here. So if the thing gets too hot, it will start cooling off these uh, FETs. Uh, let's see, how does the air flow in this thing? There's some cutouts over here, and then the fan goes into cutouts over here. So it, it's channeled to blow all the way across the board, so that's nice. It probably, uh, um, probably sucks it in on this side and blows it out on that side would be my guess. I don't know if there's a marking on the fan or not. Usually, usually there is. I don't know. It doesn't doesn't matter. Um, so that's the that is the little fan there. Um, it's nice that it doesn't come on all the time. It's only when needed. All right. So that's the inside. All right. Well, that's my review of this uh, inverter. Um, it does not have a true sine wave. You pay a lot of money for those. It has a very truncated uh, square wave that, that sort of simulates AC. Again, check to see if your equipment to ha can handle such a, uh, such a thing. And um, yeah, build quality seems okay.